Let's go to Brussels, where I'm joined by Vit Novotny. He's a senior research officer at the Wilfred Martin Center for European Studies and a former candidate for the Czech Parliament. And Martin Michelo is the deputy director of the Europium Institute for European Policy, a think tank focusing on European integration. Good to have you both on the program. Vit Novotny, let me start with you. Before we look at the uh, permutations, the implications of all the protests, just Help me understand how big of a moment it was that a quarter of a million people were upset enough, angry enough, passionate enough to get onto the streets and make their voices heard. Yes, hello. Thank you for the um, invitation to this program. Um, this was a big moment um, for uh, Czech politics. Um, uh, these demonstrations were the largest since uh, 1989. And... As in 1989, uh, these demonstrations in 2019 were um, provoked by a dissatisfaction of uh, a lot of people uh, with the current government. The difference being um, the 1989 demonstrations were uh, directed against the whole regime. The current demonstrations are directed at one particular government and its prime minister. Martin Michelo, is this all about one man? Thank you very much for the invitation, uh, first of all. This is not just about one man. Bab Babish, the, the prime minister, is sort of a, of a, of a smaller symptom uh, of the whole problem uh, that, uh, that the citizens of the Czech Republic have been clamoring a few weeks ago on the, on the plain of, of Letna. The people are mostly fed up with the rule of law, uh, abuses of, of rule of law, with the fact that ju the judiciary system no longer seems to be uh, independent. And in a way, Babish, of course, symbolizes, embodies, uh, all, all these problems, uh, but it's a longer string uh, of cynicism and of problems that people have felt, of even the lack of connection that people have felt uh, with politics in the, in the last few years. And unfortunately, because of his very abrasive, very aggressive uh, personality uh, and style of governments, Babish is really bearing the brunt uh, of perhaps 10 or 15 or even more years uh, of concerns of the, of the Czech population. Vit Novotny, there's a 0% chance that he's going to step down, right? Mm, it's close to zero. In uh, my opinion, mm, he still has the majority in the Chamber of Deputies, and there is no objective, politically, mathematical reason to force him to resign. So I see that uh, a chance as, as very, uh, very mm -hmm. slim indeed. Yeah, Martin, the fact that both Babish and the President Zeman were very dismissive of the protests, they almost made light of the protests, does that mean that even if there's nobody stepping down from his position, they're not going to even listen to what the protesters have to say? Well, of course, you mentioned it. I mean, both the President and the Prime Minister completely misconstrued uh, what the protests were about. Uh, the president ridiculously claimed that they were disputing the results of free and fair elections, which was absolutely not the case. Uh, and the prime minister himself said that, you know, the more money you give the people, the more they are dissatisfied. And none uh, of, of the people who were protesting, and if, if it was the case, it was a minority, had anything to say about either the validity of the elections that took place now two years ago uh, or about were complaining about the, the, the quality uh, of life. The real issue here, and that goes back a bit to your previous question as well, is that the opposition parties have no desire uh, whatsoever to, to step up to the plate uh, and to actually lead uh, the, the Czech Republic. In, in the opposition, it's very comfortable for them, given the fact that Babish still has a, a plurality uh, in the chamber and a plurality also of favorable opinions uh, in, in citizens, they have no desire to, to, to step up to the plate. They can let Babish you know, lose popularity further and further, and that's a moment when they may be able to, to strike. Uh, but right now, there is absolutely uh, no desire from the opposition to, uh, to, to do anything. And secondly, of course, uh, President Zeman controls the system. President Zeman is the one who would be able to call for uh, elections. And given the fact that there is sort of a, a pact of non-aggression between the president uh, and the prime minister, uh, I see no reason why the president uh, would call for anticipated uh, elections if only for the fact that they could potentially reinforce Babich's power. Vit, what does it mean that there doesn't seem to be a political alternative to Babish? And as we heard from Martin, the opposition doesn't quite have its ducks in a row. Mm. Yes, it's an interesting uh, phenomenon indeed. I think 
The main cause is the, uh, the fragmentation that there was produced in the last uh, parliamentary elections in 2017. Uh, um, this election sent nine parties into the Chamber of Deputies, um, three of which uh, support the current government, and uh, five or six of which are in opposition. Now, this opposition is fragmented, and um, th there is not a single um, alternative, a political alternative mm -hmm. to, the, to the current government. There, there are many other alternatives, but uh, you know, numerically, they are, they are too small. But Martin, there are claims from the protesters and others that Babish is corrupt, right? So they point to the European Commission audits of the Czech Republic's finances, the misuse, alleged misuse of EU funds. They look at the empire and they say that this is dirty money. Is it almost taken for granted that there is corruption at a massive level taking place? Unfortunately, the Czech Republic, like other countries in Central and Eastern Europe, uh, is not bereft uh, of, of, of corruption. There have been issues uh, that have been well documented and that go well, uh, you know, be, uh, beyond uh, the, the case of, of Babish that, uh, that, that prove this. I mean, the, the country's defense uh, capabilities and, uh, you know, the, the country's defense equipments uh, have all gone through tenders that have uh, raised certain questions and that have led certain officials uh, to go to jail. Uh, you know, certain public procurements also for transportation, for buildings, uh, also has seen issues of, of corruption. So, in a way, there is a certain part of the population that is very cynical in saying, well, you know, corruption is, is something that happens, and unfortunately there is not much that we can do. But then you have the other part uh, that is now protesting uh, in the streets because they realize that this is something uh, that, is, that is not normal. Now onto the question of whether Babish uh, himself is, is corrupt. Well, uh, it, the, the, this whole affair asks a bigger question, you know, just, just like Trump, who also has sizable financial interests, you really ask yourself the question of can a, some, you know, someone of wealth, a billionaire, uh, run a country, especially a, a fairly small country like the Czech Republic, without having any accusations of, of conflicts of, of interest? That's a fair question. But here, I mean, the case is pretty strong uh, against the fact that uh, Prime Minister Babish himself was directly uh, involved in the disbursement uh, of common agricultural policy funds that would benefit uh, the, uh, the, the interests of, his, uh, of one of his main companies, uh, Agrofert, even though he did put them, uh, in that, those companies, in a, in a in a blind trust. So, of course, there are issues of conflicts of interest. There are issues that are borderline uh, corruption, and there are issues of, you know, testing the limits uh, of the system. And I think that in the past, the, the previous Czech governments, they hadn't seen so much pushback from Brussels, from the European Union uh, itself. And the fact that this is changing is also perhaps what is provoking such a strong reaction uh, from Prime Minister Babish. Right. So, Vit Novotny, people would say no smoke without fire. And they look at potential conflict of interest. And now they're also asking for the new justice minister to resign. So, presumably, they don't believe that the system is robust enough to be able to weed out corruption. They believe that the justice minister and the law is on the side of the Babish administration. Is that true? Mm -hmm. I think that's the belief of those who uh, went out on the streets and uh, some of their supporters who didn't but still support them. But uh, we have to note that uh, 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 sufficient numbers um, are, are siding with, with Babish. Uh, they, they believe that, uh, yes, perhaps he is uh, a bit corrupt. Maybe he has taken some money. But hey, the others before him have done it as well, and maybe they have done it on a, on a bigger scale. So at least this guy is, um, um, you know, he's, he's more honest about it. Right. And indeed, uh, the, 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 the standard of living uh, has been rising recently. Uh, unemployment is at a record low. It's the lowest in the European Union. And um, certain groups, such as uh, pensioners, um, and uh, people on, on uh, lower incomes, um, they've benefited from, from, right. uh, from the uh, rules of the current government. Yeah. Well, okay, uh, and that's a good point to make, and it's fascinating to sort of delve into that uh, mindset. Martin, we've heard the Trump comparison. It's easy to make. He's got a, a younger wife. 
He's a billionaire who went into politics after making all his money in, in business beforehand. There's another comparison that seems to be creeping in recently. That's Viktor Orban. People are saying we've seen this movie before and this is similar to Hungary. Is that an accurate comparison? Look, at this point, I don't want to be that doomy and gloomy and, and uh, go full on into a comparison with, uh, with the prime minister of, of Hungary. Uh, of course, the reality is that uh, there is a certain amount uh, of friendship uh, between uh, Prime Minister Orban and Andrei Babish, very simply because when Andrei Babish was looking to form his government, which took him almost one year, uh, and he was a bit, you know, left out, he didn't get any legitimating visits uh, or legitimizing visits from, from leaders, from France, from Germany, which he was expecting. Well, the, one of the rare leaders to take him under his helm was actually Prime Minister uh, Orban. And the fact that uh, Prime Minister Babish is Slovak, uh, with Hungarian roots, this also creates, you know, sort of a of a personal friendship, which whether you like it or not, whether you find it important or not, actually plays a role uh, on the on the international scene. And of course, Mr. Babish has expressed a certain penchant for, you know, uh, appreciating the the sort of control uh, that Mr. Orban has uh, over uh, over his country, and he would certainly like to reproduce some elements uh, of that in in the Czech Republic. He would like to get rid of certain counter powers, of certain counterweights. Uh, to his own uh, decision-making. Mr. Babish has long stated that he finds the parliamentary process to be completely useless uh, and to be uh, run uh, by a bunch uh, of, of people who are, who are corrupt. Uh, and he himself rises above corruption because he is, he is rich enough. Uh, the fact that he is trying to control the justice, the judiciary system, uh, also says something about certain pensions uh, mm -hmm. that he has for overlooking certain fundamentals uh, of, the, uh, of, of the rule of law. So yes, there is perhaps a bit of a, I want to say, of a, of a fascination uh, towards the, the, the power that Mr. Orban, but also uh, the, the power of, uh, of, of the Polish leaders over, over their country and right. the way they can really, you know, disturb uh, the European consensus. But at the end of the day, uh, Mr. Babish knows very well that the interests of the Czech Republic lie uh, in a strong Europe and not in a Europe mm -hmm. uh, that, is, uh, that, is, that is disrupted. Yeah. Uh, in an interview that I watched of his, he said, I'm clearly very pro-Europe. He's a fascinating character. Vit Novotny, just looking at the timetable, looking forward, five months' time, 30th anniversary of the start of the Velvet Revolution, the day before that, protesters or organizers of this big protest last month are calling for another big one. What can we expect, Vit? Hmm. Well, <clears throat> a lot uh, can happen before then. Mm, in fact, the, uh, the future of the current government is now in balance, not because of the demonstrations that we witnessed, but uh, because of a, of a, uh, a conflict inside the government coalition where uh, the president of uh, the republic is refusing to, uh, to accept the resignation of a, of a social democratic uh, uh, minister of culture. And the, uh, the social democrats may leave the government uh, for this reason. That still has to be decided. Mm -hmm. So that's one point. Uh, another point is, of course, uh, the summer is um, unlikely to, uh, to, to uh, we are, we are unlikely to see de large demonstrations over the summer. People will be leaving um, uh, Czechia on, on, uh, on holiday. But um, I think, my, if I were to guess, I would say in, uh, in five months' time, uh, Babish will still be in power as prime minister, probably a weakened prime minister, and perhaps with a different uh, government coalition. Okay, gentlemen, I have to move on. But it's been good to talk to you, Vitna Votny and Martin Michelot. Thanks for joining us on the Newsmakers.